Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today, I am getting started on my 1.9 liter from 1.6 liter engine swap. Currently in the car is my 1984 or 5 1.6 liter turbo diesel and it has rod knock and blow by. I have thoroughly whipped this engine and tested things on it and tried things to the point that it is now basically in a state of complete failure, just not catastrophic. And this right here is my 1.9 liter ALH engine that I've been very patiently and precisely building up over the last six to nine months. And it is just about ready to go in the car. So to get things started off here, um, unfortunately I have to start with a little bit of backtracking. Uh, this motor and this car are being kind of purpose built now for the racetrack and for racing in general. And one of the things that you encounter while racing period is high cornering G's. And one of the things I just straight up forgot to do and put in this engine was any kind of oil pan baffling windage tray, anything to help contain the wet sump oil from just sloshing all the way away from the oil pump when you take a hard corner. So kind of initial steps today are in fact to get a windage tray, which costs like 20 bucks, not even much inside this oil pan, which I already glued shut <laughs> and maybe weld some baffling around the pickup tube, seal that back up, and then we'll move on to more interesting things. The rest of the swap will kind of look like this. I'm gonna be pulling the fuel pump out of my 1.6 and I will be swapping my 1.9 liter Bosch pump head into it because it has a Hans auto parts pump head in it right now, which is questionable. We'll also try to move the pressure regulator from my 1.9 pump to the 1.6 so it can be a full MTDI pump with the proper case pressure. Once we have the fuel pump kind of sorted, I'll be pulling the 1.6 head because my very favorite ARP 2000 head studs are currently occupied and holding 1.6 head on the 1.6 block. And right now I just have a couple ARP not 2000 studs holding this head in position gently. So that's approximately what it's gonna look like once the head has been fully cinched down and this is fully tight and has a timing belt on it and everything, then I'll be yanking the rest of the 1.6 out of the engine bay and completing the swap. After the swap is complete, there will be plenty of hoses and wires and things like that to hook up on my new 1.9 motor and I'll kind of work through that as best I can. So as for right now, it's time to unseal the oil pan I so lovingly sealed like a month ago. Off we go. So being that I already installed this oil pan once and now it's all glued in there and I'm gonna have to fucking chip everything back out. Um, taking the bolts out, sure knocking it off, but then as I go to clean this, I'm going to be super careful because I have all my new clean parts in here. So when I go to chip off this gasket and clean everything up, I'm gonna be kind of rotating it around to make sure the stuff I'm cleaning off isn't falling into my new engine.
So that was kind of a pain in the butt as I knew it would be because I used glue gasket glue as the way I put the oil pan on, which is as good as you can put a pan on. It doesn't get any better than that. At any rate, this is the part I bought that I was missing. And again, I have a feeling someone was in here before me because there were like key factory things that weren't factory anymore. This is one of them. This is the windage tray, which basically keeps, like it collects oil flung off the crank and drops it back into the pan. And it also connects to these set of holes, which I think are like the oil return from the head, most likely. Things like that. <laughs> and controls where that oil goes, and it also keeps some of the oil from splashing up into the crankshaft area. Additionally, you may find if you put your oil pump on that this back bolt is too long, which is what I found. And the reason it's too long is because you're missing something, and what you're missing is this windage tray, which goes right in here like this. So you can see, once you put this sucker in here, you actually get pretty good like crank protection, if we're gonna call it that. Uh, it will prevent oil from splashing up into places it shouldn't be fairly well. So, I'm going to install this. And then I was also thinking the 1.6, which I'm pretty sure is the same size head as this, so it almost fit, uh, has like a baffle like this that goes on the pickup tube. So I was thinking of welding on, you know, like some fins or like a little gusset over here or just something to keep the oil around the pickup tube head a little bit more because the pan itself is just a big square. So, gotta put this thing on first, which is pretty easy. And uh, then we'll get into the rest of it. Okay, so this thing slots in here just like this. A bolt holds it there. There's a bit of a positive catch in these holes as well. And the rest of this you may see is kind of flapping around, but these tabs on the side are actually pressed in by the oil pan. So, I don't think it's terribly essential, but I'm actually gonna go ahead and put a little RTV on this face so it actually does what it's supposed to. <laughs> and then you put a bolt through there, and then we're kinda off to the races. The only other thing then is to determine how low the oil pan sits, and we can push the dipstick back in now. So you can see normal operating oil level comes all the way up to about here. So ideally when the engine is running, the oil is just kissing the bottom of this pan. So you can see the, the pickup tube isn't actually, I mean, it's covered, but it's not like that covered. Let's see. And the engine is a slightly backwards tilt. Ah, oh, so it's actually well covered. Cause you think, this is flat relative to how the engine's sitting right now. And so the oil will actually be pretty high in here once everything's in. Shoo, the oil pan in the back comes up four and three quarters inches which it's about right there. And in the front, it comes up about five. So it does go real close to the pickup. Uh, I'm mainly just thinking it might be good to have some fins that do this that are probably no higher than the oil pump. Well, maybe a little higher and three quarters. So they can come up a little bit above this face. And honestly, it could be as simple as a piece of steel that goes behind it, just to keep the oil from sloshing too much side to side. Kind of thinking something real simple like this. I don't know if this is the right piece of metal to start with, but something real simple, just like right here, and maybe like right there, could be the cat's pajamas. So when you take a hard turn, the oil has to like slosh its way through this thing. And then when it comes back, it should feed a little easier because it's angled. And maybe I can just trim it around this to sit. The tricky thing is 
actually getting this to fit tightly in the oil pan because it's kind of blind. So, so far this is what I've come up with. I got this part, it's short enough to fit inside the oil pan. Got this plate, I'm thinking I wanna put the plate, weld it to the bottom of the pickup head like that. And I don't want this like, I kinda of want it like V-shaped. So as long as there's enough room in the pan for it to be here, I kind of want it to go just like right like here. I might have to notch some out for this to sit more flat, but that way the oil can move around still pretty fine, but like it won't slosh as much, especially down to this end where I don't want it. Okay, and this is what my modified oil pickup tube looks like, just a plate. Now, put that back on. And then, kind of put it like right here, I think. Might have to tack that. Hmm. Okie dokie, so here's the final product ish. Just about final. I need to put a few more welds on it, but you can see oil pan fits. Take that off. That's what underneath. And then if we take that off of there. I'll show you the thought. Sure. This will sit in here. It's not this low quite, but it's probably about here. So any oil that's going to slosh to that end of the pan uh, will have significant interruption pretty much which is what we want but oil can still get back and still flow around places it's just making it harder for it to slosh that's all we're going for and again i don't quite know where this thing is located in three dimensions it might be like up here even it's hard to tell how deep in here it really is but that's what we're going with for my oil windage tray, and then the pickup baffle. Cool, and I was actually having a slight interference issue just now that I was having trouble figuring out, and it turns out it's actually the ARP main studs. When you use a gasket, it gets just high enough, I think, for this not to be a problem. But without the gasket, because I'm just gonna go with glue, it wasn't quite seating, and all my bolt holes were like, a little bit off center this way. So I just shaved the kind of protrusion off of the pan and now it sits just fine. Here I was adjusting my oil pump <laughs> pickup I just made because I thought this was the problem. It was not the problem. At last I have success here. I have my baffle and my oil pan drops nicely over it and lines up with all its holes with no issues is pretty much the criteria. So, now we can put things together. Now that the gasket maker's on the ALH and setting up, it's on the teardown time. I just pulled my lower coolant hose. The first thing I'm kind of focusing on and what I'm trying to extract is my fuel pump. I want to get the pump out and get it reset and attached to the 1.9. In order to do that though, I am going to start a soft teardown. I'm going to go ahead and pull my radiator hose because it's in the way. I already pulled the lower hose so it can drain. I'm gonna pull all my intake piping cause it's in the way too. And then I can actually focus on some of the fuel pump aspects like the timing belt, injectors, etc. So we're gonna go ahead and get going on that.